Welcome everybody. Um, I just uh, had a few comments on the last video, so I wanted to quickly clarify. I accidentally had the F56, not F56A. So if you look right here, this is the F56A. And there's a few subtle differences, but they are fairly important at the same time. Um, if we, if you were to go back and look at the other video, you'll see this, but uh, one of the bigger ones is that right here, this presence control and the way it's wired is quite different around in this area here. But I just wanted to make a quick show of that. And then also, uh, I believe, which one was it? Where was it? Oh, right here. So the second 12AX7, that's the phase inverter, it actually has on the F56, it has a uh, cathode capacitor bypass cap on that. I think they're shared, but in this case, it doesn't have it. So, you know, there is one over here on the primary one, but there isn't one here. And Doug's changes are a little the same, though. They're, on Doug's, he doesn't, he uses this 820 and 250 on. It might be 220 on the normal channel, I think, but the bright channel uses a more standard uh, as well. So uh, the the normal channel will be more bass uh, uh, voiced, and the bright channel is a bit more guitar voiced. Uh, and I think he did that on purpose to make it more of a guitar amp. This was originally designed to be a bass amp, thus the bass man name. Uh, and and that's part of why having this uh, 820 ohm resistor and 250 ohm or 250 microfarad capacitor helps pass a lot more bass frequencies through. So. At any rate, there you have it, and uh, then we're going to move on to our next part of the video. So I just wanted to clarify that error from the last one. Thanks. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, the next build up on, if you've watched my uh, previous video series, is now going to be a Fender Bassman F5F6A clone. I keep trying to say F5, it's 5F6A. Um, so I've started putting things together. I've not, not done any actual wiring yet, but I just wanted to kind of show you the starting point. Uh, the only thing that was a little tricky, the rest of this is stuff that anybody of you should be able to do with a couple of screwdrivers and wrenches and whatnot, is I just attached the power transformer, the choke, and the output transformer. The only thing I had to kind of do is this particular output transformer is not exactly fitting the holes that were designed for this originally, so I had to kind of get a, a file and file back in a little bit on e all four of the feet posts inward a little bit, you know, inward this way and this way on either side, so that I could fit it in the holes of the chassis so I don't have to re-roll the chassis. One other change I'm going to do, and I'll flip this over in a minute and give you another shot of that, but... I, there's four holes here and another uh, hole here. They, this would be what they would call the doghouse, and they'd put all their filter caps in here, and then they'd run the wires from those out down through here and then connect them into the board, and they would run the power into it, of course, through there as well. But uh, I'm going to do something that uh, Doug showed me a while back where you instead can put the caps right next to the board itself and then connect the wire to the grounding bus and not need to fight that battle. So uh, I'll show you a shot from the inside and give you the general idea of how that'll work. And you've seen me do it probably on the other amps as well, is that those caps just go right next to the board. So at any rate, uh, I will uh, flip this over and then give you a shot from the inside. Um, I have not, again, I've not done much else other than just putting this stuff together. I've put in my input jacks, I've put in the switches, the fuse, etc. Uh, I've got my tube sockets on the back. In fact, I can flip that quickly. Oh, that was what I was looking for. There it is. Um, I have this guy here. We'll go inside here, but I've not populated the board yet or anything. That's still waiting. We'll, we'll show some videos on doing that again. There's my choke. Um, and just as a general... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's my output transformer. Here's the black wires on my choke. And the reason both are black is a choke does not matter the orientation of how you hook it up. Its job is just as a choke or an inductor is to slow the change of the current... Um, or sorry, it's to slow the change of the direction of the AC current so that it uh, helps keep the ripple down and under control. Uh, it's kind of one of the things an inductor does. The choke helps with filtering as well. Um, so, as you can see, though, I've got my preamp sockets, I've got my power sockets, and then my rectifier socket, and the RCA jacks that are for the output. This is another thing that's a little different on the baseband, uh, but I did buy some uh, RCA inputs as well, and I'm going to buy the four speakers. We'll, we'll do this the way they did it in the original baseband, where they have just hooked up to their, I believe that the black is always your common on these, these I, I shouldn't say always, at least the common ones I've seen, but sometimes people will do weird things with transformers, but generally black will be the common ground connection, and then the white, green, and green with the yellow stripe will be different levels of ohms, uh, impedance, and this one, I believe if I remember right, is the two ohm, and that's what I'm going to use, because it's going to be four and C, in four uh, in parallel, all 8-ohm speakers, so it gives you 2-ohms. Um, so, at any rate, um, but we'll, we'll go into that in a little more detail. And uh, effectively, my next steps are really in this bill are going to be to hook in power, connect it to the switches and uh, whatnot, and then I'm going to also populate this board separately, then I'll be able to drop it in and start wiring that up. But, as I mentioned, once you put these this in, you effectively hook the top uh, end up near the... Um, power tubes, and then you'll have the bottom end hooked in near the uh, potentiometers, which are going to go in here. I haven't put those in yet. I have them, but 
uh, and then you can this is the power rail along the bottom you hook your your you know your other subsequent ones here and then the main ones you can just hook off the main power and connect them to where they're coming in from the rectifier over towards this area etc so hopefully i'll be able to find some room once i kind of set this guy down in there to set my first two here and then i'll put the second one right on it the third one on it. i think there's a, four, a fourth if i remember right so those will go along that bottom edge and they can just kind of be sitting at a slightly upward angle and connecting to your grounding bus that you run through here to ground into your pots and to ground these two so that's my main grounding bus will run down around here and then over and then also we pull the grounds off of the the board the turret board as well so this is just really the start. It's maybe an hour and a half to two hours of work. This is the kind of thing that I think most people that like tinkering in the shop know how to do is just put screws and nuts in and whatnot. One other thing, if you're ever doing this, that you should probably be careful of, and at the angle you may not be able to see this, but these, uh, I've, I've aligned them always the same way, so the notch is the same way. Wherever this is at, and I can't see it at this angle, my, my the, there's what's called a key on the on the tube socket so and on the tube so that they, you can't get them misaligned. You don't want one pointing this way and like one pointing this way because then it becomes really tricky trying to figure out which it goes. So always try and make sure that your notch is oriented the same way no matter how that is. So even if that would say this way, or I think it might be this way, I don't remember because I can't see from this angle. I don't want to go in front of the camera. But uh, just little things like that. Same thing with these type here. Uh, I can kind of duck down and look at an angle, I think, on these ones. So my, my main keyhole will be up here on all three of them. If I did it the other way around, they would be kind of down this way and then this way and then this way would be bad. So you always want them aligned the same way. So... There you have it. Uh, I will show a little bit more detail probably on the input jacks because there's, these are going to be wired the fender way, and so I want people to see that. And there's a, a cool discussion I've seen about that, so we'll try and cover that a little bit as well, but that's a separate small video segment that I'll set up an angle on and whatnot. So uh, there you have it. That's the first one that we're going to be doing, and uh, hopefully everybody's going to enjoy watching me build this one as much as I am building it. So thanks, everybody. Have a great one. And uh, keep your tubes biased hot and keep the jams coming.